Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're with us. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, if you've watched my channel very long, you know that I care an awful lot about kids learning, uh, kids of all ages, and that we include them in our adventures and in our learning and in the things that we're doing. And so today I had a wonderful time with some of the children in my community uh, where I'm part of a group where we help them set goals and achieve them. And we had such a great time doing some card making as a service so that they could make a card all by themselves. And then they had to figure out who they're going to send send it to and write a nice note. So we're focusing on cards today and how using pre-cut sizes can really simplify and just be a game changer for card making in your home or in your home school or with your group of kids. And so um, I'm going to give you some tips, tricks, and we're going to make a very simple card that turns out beautifully and that the, the kids can make and feel very successful with. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, let's talk about pre-cut sizes of things because I'm telling you, if you will pre-cut some things and just take a little time before you get your kids involved, this will save so much time and make things easier. And so one of the first things I do is I pre-cut the folded card. And so I have mostly white and some black and then some colors that are assorted, but I do uh, two types of cuts and these are your basic A2 card or a five and a half by four and a quarter uh, finished card. And so I cut some that have a top fold and I mean so it can open this way or that way so but I just call that a top fold so I can keep it straight these are all top fold and then I get into oh let me lift this up so you can see I have them labeled and then these are the side fold cards and so these uh, open the tall way I guess you would say that so I do uh, both kinds because we use both kinds so much and I just keep them in this nice little box in a drawer the kids know that they can uh, access those at any time to do their card base now let me say something about the paper I have used all kinds of card stock and I don't know if you can see on camera but this is my favorite card stock this is called Nina white and I will uh, link sources for these things in the description below or you can go to my blog at blog.mbbailey.com and you'll get more, uh, you'll get the links and you'll get uh, pictures and a little bit more detail. But I don't know if you can tell the difference. This is actually a different card stock that I tried and I don't know if you can tell the difference in color between those. This actually comes out pretty gray and this is just that nice bright white card stock. This is Nina, uh, I think it's just white, Nina White and this is 90 pound. I have uh, since got Nina White in 110 pound and I even prefer that. And so um, you can use any card stock, but sometimes that nicer card stock just adds uh, just an extra that to the card. And the Nina White really is not uh, much more expensive than the others, but I will put uh, sources for all of those. Now, I have several pre-cut sizes. So this is, when I do a lot of cutting and I end up with one size that is common, I like to measure that and keep them together. These were uh, cut off from uh, 12 by 12 sheets and I cut down a whole bunch in that five and a half by four and a quarter size once they're folded. When you're doing a 12 by 12, you end up with strips like this and I keep those sizes together because it just makes it easier to find things. And those are a fine size for an, a card as well. And that even though it's not a standard card size, it absolutely works and that's perfectly fine. And so those are some papers that are available to the kids. And I basically make all of my supplies available to them. For sure the paper, because my feeling is why guard it when 
there's an opportunity for a child to learn. Okay, so here's uh, some other strips that were left over from another cut down. I don't even, even remember what it was for, but we've actually ended up using these quite a bit and we will be using them today in the simple card that we were making. We also had these white strips and so we went ahead and I pre-stamped these as part of this card making uh, adventure. So uh, those I pre-stamped with a little stamp. This is uh, from Scrappy Tales. I just, this is, this goes along with the florist shop and there's this little stamp that says thinking of you that just fit so perfectly on the ends of those strips. So in just a second, when I make the card, I'll show you how we use those. Now for pre-cut sizes, I have three sizes beside, besides the ones I showed you that uh, have the, you know, the folded openings. Uh, I have three sizes that I cut. This is the eight and a half by five and a half. So basically you're taking an eight and a half by 11 sheet and just cutting it in half. Now, the reason I keep those is for die cutting, for uh, stamping and coloring, uh, for just all kinds of things. And all, and these also can be folded into a card, but I have found that we need some pieces that are just flat that we can just uh, grab quickly and use. So that's eight and a half by five and a half. The next size that I cut is the five and a half by four and a quarter. Now that is standard A2 card size. And the reason I cut those is so that they can fit straight on that cover and just create a different colored card if that's what we want. And if you're using 90 pound card stock, that is particularly helpful because it really strengthens the card, gives it some, some bulk so that it's not quite so flimsy as that would be alone. And so I have a good number of those cut. We use those today and I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a second. The the other size I cut is five and a quarter by four. So here's the reason I do this. This is the five and a half by four and a quarter that's the standard card size. I cut these at five and a half, five and a quarter by four to create that beautiful little border. So I can really create a substantial card with that. And so I, I like that size that's just a tick down from the standard size. And then we also do five by three and a quarter if we want more layering or if we just want a larger border. And so I have found that those three sizes really serve me well. Five and a half by four and a quarter, five and a quarter by four, and then five by three and a quarter. And I keep those on hand pretty much all the time. If I have a scrap of paper that I've used, uh, I've done some die cutting with, I try to cut what's left into one of those standard sizes. But if I can't, then I just go ahead and just trim off all those little die cut bits. And then I, I keep these ready to uh, use for other things. But if I can get paper cut into those sizes, I do it because it saves so much time when it's time to create the card. Okay, so I'm going to clear this up and then I'll tell you a little bit about adhesives, which ones to use with kids uh, and uh, how to make that whole process a little bit easier. So uh, you all know school glue. This is an excellent, um, glue to use with kids. They're familiar with it. It's small enough they can manage. It doesn't get out of hand. And in fact, when I am working on cards with kids, particularly a group, that is my favorite one. I do recommend getting a good quality glue. I like the Elmer's glue uh, because it works. It sticks down. Uh, and it also is easy to wash off the table. And you know, with kids, sometimes that's an issue. I like to put down mats, uh, something like this, or uh, just big paper to keep uh, that off the table. But that is my number one pick for when you're um, doing cards with kids. Now, there are other options though, and uh, there's Elmer's Glue All. I do like that, very strong, very sturdy. 
And then there's also this, uh, the art glitter glue that I like, I like to use. And there are a lot of liquid glues that are great for crafting, paper crafts particularly. But with kids, <laughs> they tend to use a lot more glue than they need. And so I kind of stay away from these. Um, unless they're a little older and you can teach them to do just little dots around the card or if it's absolutely necessary, but I rarely do cards with children where that's absolutely necessary. So just an option. Now, I do like kids to learn though. And so I like to have available something like a tape runner to teach them, you know, that you don't push too hard, the right kind of pressure. But um, I like to have that available just as an option to help them learn. However, uh, if I were working with kids, I would not use the Elmer's tape runner because it is secure. You put that paper down and it's stuck. There is no pulling it up. There's no moving it around. Now, some tape runners are repositionable or they're not as firm as Elmer's. So if I was going to have kids use that, I wouldn't be using Elmer's or I would be using repositional, repositionable only. Then the other option is uh, these kind of double-sided tapes uh, where you you uh, lay the tape down on your card and then you pull up the paper. And this is a really fun thing for the kids to learn. I do like this because this particular one I have, I get at the dollar store. And so for a dollar, you get a roll of tape and it's fun for the kids to try and it's just a nice learning thing. So, but when we are creating, as far as dexterity goes, this is a little more difficult. And so that uh, Elmer School Glue is actually pretty great for adhesives. Now, when we're talking about uh, adding things like glitter, to a card, I go ahead and stick with the Elmer's glue. I teach them to use it on the side, to draw, to trace. And when we make our card in just a minute, you will see how we use that with our glitter. Uh, just another note on glitter, I have always what I call our, our glitter catcher. It's just one of those eight and a half by five and a half pieces of paper. And I just fold it and I have one uh, actually, I usually have several available. Today, uh, let's see, I had uh, 10 uh, girls from my community that we were working with, and we had four glitter catchers and three colors of glitter. So you'll use your adhesive with that, and you'll see that in just a minute when we make the card. Okay, I think that's all the preliminary stuff. Uh, let me just say, uh, use use scissors, use tape, use watercolors, do those things with the kids so they have a chance to experiment, to learn, to increase their dexterity, and to just have fun uh, creating because that's an important thing for us is to be able to create, and that's a great thing for kids. Okay, it's time to make the card. I want to show you the finished version of the card and it's just so cheerful and fun and I'll show you which things we all did the same and which things they had choices on. And I recommend if you're working in a group, everybody do the same card and then interpret that into their own choices. So this is the card. Uh, we're doing masked borders. We're doing glitter. We're, we're doing a, a banner and the inside. And it just, that is our basis. I had that ready to show the kids so that they would see where we were going. And then uh, at the very end of the video, I will show you a photograph of a whole bunch of cards that they did. And you'll see from this one design, they interpreted it and and every card looks different. And it's so interesting how that turned out, but that's where we're going. And then I will show you their cards and you'll see uh, another version that I created and you'll just get to see uh, several different ways to interpret this. So, when I got things ready, I limited the number of choices for the kids. And so uh, what I did is I had certain uh, cards, at least two of each, because we need two, one for inside and out. And then I had some of our banner making 
papers, and I just really limited it. And I told them, these are the things you have to choose from, and that's all we're choosing from today. And I told them straight up, we are all learning the same card, and then you can interpret what we learn uh, in your own unique card. So we're starting with some washi tape, and I'm just going to carefully line that up with the outside edge of the card. And um, this is this is a single piece, and this is the piece that is um, five and a quarter by four. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying this on, and I'm not going to uh, really rub down that tape because that tape's coming off. This border is this washi tape is only for the border. Now I gave the children a choice of stamps, so I brought out my box of stamps and uh, just let them pick. Then I did use the uh, wood block stamps because I didn't have the uh, capacity to have them all use the misty stamping tool or anything like that. And so I just went ahead and just put out a bunch of wood block stamps. So their choices were basically, they had a choice of two or three of what, four colors of card and banner and then their stamp. Everything else we all did exactly the same. So we start with this taped off and this is this is a masked border and I really love that. Now we're going to make sure that we have a wipe that I have sitting here and I'm gonna keep it in a glob so that we can clean our stamps. And uh, it's important that the children are taught you clean your stamp between uh, colors because uh, we don't wanna ruin our stamp pads. So we're going to just go ahead and we are going to stamp over that washi border and we're just gonna go ahead and put some fun color down. Then we clean the stamp and I just had all the stamps laid out uh, and we just rotated those stamps. And so two or three girls were using one color and then we rotated until they had stamped through all the colors. Some of the girls didn't want to use certain colors and that's fine. So we just let that be. They got to uh, make that choice if they wanted to eliminate a color. But I did not give them uh, 10 different colors to choose from. I kept that uh, very uh, limited because in a group, and especially as kids are learning, sometimes uh, you need to limit the choices so they can learn the parts that you need them to learn. And just I, I just love these fun colors. I knew that our group liked, liked fun, cheerful colors, and so that kind of guided my uh, choices here. And they don't have to fill every white spot and they can overlap like that. Okay, and that might even be a little too much, but did you notice that between every color, I went ahead and cleaned my stamp and that's it. And now we carefully pull up the washi tape and uh, some washi tape actually does better than others. It's interesting how that works. And um, I have found that the Nina cardstock is really smooth and does better with this kind of washi tape application. Now we're done with the stamping, so simple. And it's just fun because uh, that stamping just created the fun border. Now we're going to go ahead and mount that onto our uh, card. If we're working at my counter, uh, I usually just let them work on the counter because I can easily clean the glue off of that. If we're at the kitchen table, I put down a, a mat that I have made or paper because uh, it's just a little harder to clean off of wood than it is to clean off of a, a granite countertop or formica. There. So we're putting glue everywhere. And then I like to kind of stand this up. And I do like glue also because you can kind of fiddle with it for a minute, position it until it dries. Okay, there you go. Now, while that dries, we're going to work on our banner. Now, one of the things I like to show them how to do is to create a dovetail cut. And so 
I'm going to trim this so that I have about a half an inch between be under the words and the end of the card. And then I look at it, eyeball halfway between, and I just make a cut just part way up. And then I go from corner to cut and corner to cut and then I end up with this really nice dovetail. And that's just an easy way and I teach them that's a dovetail cut. And it was so interesting today because I taught them that. And then several minutes later I said, now what do we call that? And they just said dovetail, they do right off. And then we are going to go ahead and glue down about half of it uh, onto the green. And then we will dovetail the green. All right, now while that dries, we are going to do our embellishment here. Now on our original card, we had that nice sparkly, uh, what, orange in there, and it just, that one sparkles. Now, when you have smaller things like this, you can choose to do one sparkly, or you can do, do maybe three sparkly. I try to um, emphasize doing things in, in odd numbered groups because of the way our eye sees things and, and there's a whole science behind that. So what, what I'm going to do is get out my, my glitter catcher and I'm going to use the clear uh, glitter and I'll have sources, even if the brand I have doesn't exist anymore, I'll have sor sources linked below to find all of this. So I'm going to take my school glue. I want to do all the gluing at once and all the glitter at once. I don't want to uh, glue, glitter, glue, glitter. I want to do all the glue. So I'm going to pick maybe three of these since these are small. And I'm gonna pick this pink one here and I think I'll pick a blue one here, and then I'm gonna make a little bit of a triangle, so I'm gonna go the yellow one here. I can also use the edge of my school glue and, and just come in and do the stems of those three little lollipops. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell that that's what they are. And then I'm going to set that in my glitter catcher. And this is such a fun part because, you know, kids, most kids like glitter and that just makes it fun. And then I'm just going to tap, 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 pour it back. And then I'm going to tap that down again. Just so that it's a little bit uh, more defined where that glitter is. And you know what, if there's glitter in a few other places, that's okay. All right, and now I'm going to just use that same handy wipe and just get that glitter kind of pushed out of the way. There we go. Now, while we let that dry, we're going to come back to our banner. Now, I want this to sit on the front of the card and I'm gonna kind of look and I want it to, uh, I don't wanna line it up with that side and I don't want it too far over here. What I want is to have a little bit of my interior showing and I want this not right in the middle. I think I want it a little above or a little below half. So I'm going to put it right about there. So what I'm going to do is hold it in place and then fold it over the card. Then before I do any more, I'm going to actually pull it out and then make sure I line it up so it's folding straight to that card. So then I've got a straight fold like that. Now I'm going to come back in and I can check it and make sure I like that, which I do. And I like this uh, accent green. I've got some blue picked up here, but I like blue and green together. So I'm going to, I, I just like how that looks. Now, I am going to glue. You noticed when I glued, glued down the banner, I didn't glue the whole thing. The reason is because we're folding it. And if I glue it all and then fold it, it wrinkles that one side. And so, I, I just glued down the a little bit of that front and then I'm going to glue down, I'm gonna put glue right here 
and just adhere the front of that banner to the card. Now, I did see that the kids did very well understanding this process. It wasn't hard for them. This is a way to teach the kids some, some uh, card making techniques without it being uh, too difficult. I'm really liking how that looks. The glitter is beautiful. And then I'm going to open this up and I'm going to go ahead and glue further down that banner. And this is going to give me a little bit of an inside detail, just like that. And then I can come and trim that off so it's nice and straight. Then if I still have any uh, on that banner that needs to be glued, I can take care of that. There we go. And then I just have that fun interior detail to give it a uh, kind of bring the outside in. Okay, and that gives us our inside and outside, and I'm just gonna use that to kind of pick up some of that glitter since I've got glitter kind of everywhere. Okay, so we've got the outside of our card ready with the two different, actually three techniques with the border masking, stamping over the border, the glitter, and the banner. Okay, so let's go to the inside. So now we're going to go ahead. We've got a nice solid front. Our back is still pretty flimsy. And so we're going to glue in that second piece. Now, if you want to trim this down so that you get a little bit of a border, that's fine. Uh, I went ahead and kept it full size. Uh, and I'll show you why, because for for these kids, sometimes, you know, lining things up is a little bit diffi difficult. So that way I can have them stand it up, open it up, get it nice in there and flat, and then basically just push it down. And that way it's a little bit easier to get things lined up. And then if they want to, I mean, we've got a little overhang here that can be trimmed if they want it to. I try to talk to the kids about being flexible, not freaking out if it's not perfect. We also talked about what if some of this is just a little bit uh, askew, a little skiwampus. Who are you sending it to? Is, is grandma gonna care if it's a little bit off? Really the person who's receiving it, if you're sending it to a friend or a loved one, they're going to love it even if it's just a little bit askew. I know with Anne, um, we send cards every month, as you know, to my mom and to Aunt Sylvia. And uh, I know my mom uh, kind of likes it when, when she gets the card from Anne where it's not perfect. She thinks that's very sweet and she sees that Anne has put the effort in. And so uh, don't uh, try to teach your kids not to worry too much if things aren't perfect. Okay, so now we have a couple of choices. We are, we're going to put a stamp on the inside. Uh, on one of them, I did the stamp over here. But on this one, I think I'd like to do it here. And I have a feeling that this is the color that will show up. And so I'm going to use that color. And then I want to do the glitter on this one too. So just a little, oops, that side of the glue is going to work just fine. And get my glitter catcher. This uh, clear kind of just just sparkle glitter, really, I love that color. I prefer it over all of the colored glitter. And, all right, so that's the finished card. You see how easy that is. There are several things for kids to learn, and that is a card they can be proud to send. And so it's just easy, fun, nice card. So here's the one that was our our example and this is my favorite one i think because of the the colors i use just pink yellow and orange these two uh, were contrasting only slightly i like that and 
our glitter is much more impressive with that bigger image there. And then I went ahead and stamped on a scrap piece of cardstock and then glittered that and then stuck it down rather than stamping right in the card. I did that on a separate piece. I just, I really like how that looks. Uh, I think it comes out really nice. That is my favorite. And we were, we're sending that in that pink envelope. So you, you just get this really nice, uh, co cohesive look. Here's the other one. Now, when I was making mine with the kids, um, my washi tape really stuck down to that background paper. And so I actually trimmed it off. We talked about several ways to deal with that. I trimmed it. One of the other kids did some extra card stock at the very end to cover it up. Some liked it that way. So we went with just all kinds of directions with that. This is a little snow cone. I have one snow cone with the glitter, the same banner. And then on this one, some glitter got in it. And so it's kind of fun, but I decided to stamp over here and, and give that some glitter. So there are just three different ways, very same thing, but, but a few different variations on them. That's going with this. Let's take a look at the photo of the all of the cards that the kids did and you'll see so much variation and they all kind of learned something uh, a little bit different and uh, their the goal is now to go home write a special note to someone they love and then get that card in the mail and that's the beauty of a card simple easy to make and quickly in the mail bringing someone joy I hope you liked this video. I hope it encourages you to involve kids in your uh, crafting, your card making, your scrapbooking, and cards really is an easy way to involve the kids and get them going in some of this. Now, uh, don't think just about cards. Think in terms of how you might be able to use that uh, very same idea, same techniques in a lap book or uh, in a scrapbook of some kind. This could include a photo. Uh, there are just so many other ways you can take this. You could use this for any occasion, the same layout, the same design, those same techniques. So always, I encourage you to take whatever I've shown you and apply it to your situation and move it forward. Please uh, comment, share if you have uh, some pictures of your crafts that you would like to share of your take on things, please uh, go to our Facebook group. It's called Coming Home and you can post pictures there. And I'd love to see uh, what you're doing and how you are interpreting all of these fun crafts. So we'll see you next time.